So I'm glad to present some uh, Earth observation examples today. Um, yeah. So um, cities face lots of challenges due to uh, climate change, obviously, as everybody knows. And we have a lot of um, um, difficult tasks to fulfill. So one thing is that we need to monitor the change. So we need to know uh, what is changing and where is it changing and how fast. We need to do a risk assessment to better plan mitigation measures, for instance, for heat uh, risk assessment. We need to, to do a better infrastructure planning to, to build a um, livable environment in our cities. We need to better manage natural resources and lots of tasks more. And for all this, we can use Earth observation data. Um, since only 20% of you are familiar with uh, observation data, I would like to show some uh, data sets that we mainly use in our daily work. So um, we use uh, free accessible data from uh, NASA and ESA, like Landsat and Sentinel Copernicus data. Um, they have a big um, advantage because they are free and um, they have a very high time, timely resolution. Uh, we also use, of course, um, very high resolution data like aerial photographs or laser scan data. Um, they have lots of advantages too, but they are mostly not free and um, have a quite low timely resolution. So one example that I have brought today is um, the assessment of um, um, land surface temperature. This is a very important indicator um, in terms of um, heat risk assessment and uh, heat adaptation. And um, here you can see on the left side um, is the daytime summer temperature um, based on Landsat thermal infrared data. And on the right side, it's a night assessment of the summer temperature. It's based on um, MODIS. So hopefully in the near future, there will be lots of sensors uh, that will be able to monitor land surface temperature in a very high temporal and spatial resolution. So let's wait for that. Uh, but what we can already do with the data available, we have a very long archive. So Landsat is operating since 1985. And uh, we have uh, calculated a simple trend in the development of land surface temperature in summertime. And here you can see that the spatial resolution is already quite OK. So this is an example from the city of Leipzig. And uh, the northern red Blob is a new um, um, car plant from Porsche. And the surface temperature has risen quite a lot in this area, where in the south there are big uh, former mining um, areas refilled with water. So um, against the normal trend of increasing temperature, these parts are a little bit cooling. These data we can use to um, um, create um, um, heat action plans. So we can uh, monitor and um, also have real actual heat action maps. So this is a very nice um, um, application or use case. So we can um, also monitor adaptation measures. We can see if the measures that a city undertakes are um, successful. Another use case, a uh, very important one, is the monitoring of vegetation. So we have lots of um, indicators that are stand for thermal release. So we have a canopy cover, who provides uh, shading. We have the vegetation height, which is important for green volume monitoring, for um, uh, carbon um, sequestration monitoring. And uh, all these indicators um, are very relevant for cities and um, climate adaptation because, they, of course, they provide cooling through EVA transpiration. Um, they improve air quality and uh, uh, de help in decreasing noise pollution. So um, these indicators are very important and will be 
even more important in the future to use a buzzword. It's a nature-based solution is planting trees. Um, but we need to monitor the amount of trees and the amount of canopy cover, the amount of um, green volume. This can be done, of course, with very high resolution data like aerial photographs and uh, digital surface models. These can be derived from laser scan or from stereo um, uh, image matching. And um, we built a, a model based on uh, artificial intelligence. Um, it's, a, it's a unit approach. So we can um, calculate quite um, timely and um, quickly um, those vegetation indicators. These data we use as a training set to upscale this on Sentinel-1 and 2 time series because we want to provide um, um, for the whole of Germany, for instance, uh, every year the, the amount of canopy cover, green volume, and uh, also other indicators uh, to be able to really monitor in a standardized way um, the, uh, these really relevant um, climate adaptation measures. Um, we tried um, uh, this for a use case in uh, one city, uh, Duisburg, and uh, we have very good results because the city of Duisburg, we didn't take into the training data set, so it's a complete um, external evaluation. And uh, the, the airborne result is, of course, uh, of very high quality, and uh, the spaceborne result is also really uh, satisfying, in our view, at least. And we wanted to see if we can do a real monitoring, because with every model you have a lot of noise, um, and the, the goal is to minimize the noise so that we can um, monitor real change and not have um, um, artificial change. And um, we were quite satisfied with the first outcomes, uh, even though the, the change in the city uh, between 2018 and 2022 was not uh, that big, so most of the, the changes were less than 3%. Um, still, the relationship is quite um, good, and we can see that we can um, use the data for um, uh, real monitoring. Um, here you can also see um, the airborne uh, results on the left side, and the satellite spaceborne results on the right side, and you can see that the, the differences and rankings between the, uh, the different districts um, are quite um, um, the same. So um, we will be using these indicators and models to, to do um, uh, fine-scale, medium-scale and large-scale monitoring of um, urban green. Uh, but we are also interested in uh, the, the vitality of the urban green, since uh, shading and evapotranspiration and cooling can only be provided if the uh, trees are healthy. And what's quite interesting, for instance, in um, uh, Sentinel-2, we have lots of spectral bands, and those spectral bands provide information about um, leaf pigments, cell structure, and leaf water content. And if we combine all this, we can um, derive a um, um, vitality indicator telling us uh, is the tree uh, still intact or not. And uh, here you can see an example uh, from Potsdam. Um, I don't know, is there a laser pointer? This is uh, at uh, uh, the famous castle of Sanssouci. And um, it's a really nice uh, UNESCO uh, World Heritage Park with very old uh, trees planted uh, 200 years ago and many of them suffer quite severely from the drought in the last years and um, as we can see we can use Sentinel-2 data time series to assess uh, the damages and the changes in the tree cover. We also can combine this with the street tree catastrophe so um, we can assess the exact um, date where a shift um, has been recorded, where you can see that uh, there's um, um, permanent damage. 
Um, other indicators that we will be um, um, incorporating in, into the, the overall model will be the soil sealing, soil moisture, and albedo. And all this will go into a big um, regression model to assess which of the indicators are the most uh, important ones to um, provide um, um, yeah, a leverage against uh, urban heat. Uh, all the indicators will be tested with, with the city climate model, so we can um, um, easily change parameters, so we can take off all the trees, we can plant more trees, so we can have uh, scenarios and test the effect or the amount of effects those um, indicators have. And uh, what's quite interesting, for instance, is that um, the, um, there is a very high correlation of the surface temperature with the perceived temperature, which is really important for um, the assessment of um, thermal load for the people. All these indicators will be combined in a heat vulnerability model, uh, where the, the exposition and the sensitivity of the population in a city uh, will um, be incorporated so that the city, urban city planners can um, um, assess their uh, measures and plan for scenarios for the future. So, our goal was to uh, support municipalities in their um, climate resilient urban planning. And I think, uh, I hope I have shown you some uh, useful use cases how you might in, uh, in the future use Earth observation data for your work, hopefully. And uh, for further reading, you can you are invited to visit um, those websites and we also have a booth